can hear Byron linking to me because he's not far behind the tent. He's just driving along the road there. Now, I, I'm very disappointed in all of you, to be honest, and I'm going to sit here in disappointment. Watch my disappointed face. This is how I used to look at my music pupils. That's my disappointed face. This is because I have not been asked one question about my very exciting new toys. I love my new toys. Connor, on the left-hand side there, that's him. <laughs> he's, he's but slack-jawed. And then, of course, Tamsin the tiger. And Tamsin the tiger is so very special because she's actually, she's pregnant. Did you know that? I bet you didn't know. You've paid so little attention to Tams and that you didn't even realise that she was carrying babies. And I'm not sure when she's going to give birth, but it's such a clever, clever model there that you can see she is in fact uh, pregnant. And, uh, well, I'm not sure when she'll give birth, but hopefully sometime soon. So I'm very disappointed in all of you that none of you asked one question about my beautiful models. Um, I really quite like them. Oh, Jamie, that is a Jamie Patterson said she was jealous of my toys. I'm not sure that that constitutes a question. Anyway, you know what, it's dark outside, I can't find anything, so I'm going to show you my toys anyway, and you can just live with it. I think this is fascinating. Right, so let's see how this tiger has been put together, if you'd like. Well, you don't have a choice now. Thank you, Rebecca. The first and most obvious question, of course, why a tiger rather than a lion? I'd love to tell you it was because I went to India and saw a tiger and therefore I was inspired. The answer is they didn't have a lion. In fact, they didn't have an African animal at all. So I just ordered this tiger. And if you read the instruction manual, it was very clearly translated from an a language that was not English because the grammar is very strange. So it's obviously from a place where there aren't lions. I'm not sure where it was made. Okay, so here we have the liver that is attached to the stomach because it must produce all the chemicals that allow for the digestion in the stomach. That's the spleen over there. And if you are into sort of Chinese medicine, you'll know that the spleen is responsible for uh, fairness, musicality, and uh, what is the other one? I've forgotten. Anyway, something like that. So maybe this was a musical tiger. There is the lung. It's a very large lung because a tiger can run 40 miles an hour according to this rather suspect information given in uh, the instruction manual. Then, I think this is quite cool, and we were asked a little bit earlier about whether or not a tiger could give birth to identical twins. Those are the ovaries there. And what happens is that she ovulates and sends eggs down into the uterus, but it's a double-sided uterus, and it's on both sides. And so both ovaries will produce eggs that go into the double-sided uterus, which is unlike, say, in a human being, which obviously one side produces an egg at a time, as far as I remember, if I remember my biology correctly, and that goes down into the uterus, which of course is a single um, cavity. No, it's not a cavity, it's a single uh, chamber, if you like for want of a better term. And in order for a, there to be identical twins, what has to happen is fertilization takes place and the embryo then splits in half and it is genetically identical, or they, there are then two genetically identical embryos. What happens in this case, and these are obviously all twins, or not twins, well these two are going to be twins, but I suspect there'll be another two as well, so quadruplets perhaps, it's more than one egg, so each egg is uniquely is genetically unique, or well, not quite unique, but they will share traits with each other, and then each egg is fertilized by a different sperm, and that's why they look similar, but they're not identical. Now, I don't think that the process of uh, monozygotic, um, monozygotic twins is possible, perhaps, in a uterus like this, I'm not sure. Anyway, oops, Connor nearly fell over. So let's put the uh, uterus back in its place. There we are. This is quite fun, I must tell you. Uh, everybody laughed at me when I said I'd ordered a sort of child toy model, and then everyone fought in the camp to put the thing back together. It was quite amusing. Then, of course, we have the two kidneys, and they are combined with some rather crude representations of arteries and veins. There we are. We'll put them in there. 
I just think it's quite nice to see how this all fits together, especially when you compare it with, a, say, a human body. Uh, this one doesn't want to go in anyway, that'll do. Just quickly look at the heart over there. Whoops, there's the heart. And this is all in proportion, so there's a massive heart. So this animal must pump a huge amount of blood and oxygen through it when it is in full flight or about to have a fight or something like that. And then, of course, we put the leggies in place, back leggies, which we looked at earlier in comparison with the human being, front leggies, very nice. And now the ribs. And now, as far as I can work out, the tiger has got one extra rib compared to ours. We've got 12. And this tiger seems to have, I think the leg goes over the top of the rib. Sorry, I'm not very good at this yet. <laughs> there we are. And the tiger has got 13 ribs, as far as I can count. And then they very conveniently, of course, provided us with a clear attachment, which will keep everything inside and allow us to observe the tiger without taking it apart every time. Thank you very much. I notice still that no one is asking any questions about my tigers, so, well, I'm, I'm not going to give up. I think it's quite a splendid creature. Ah, it's not of the highest quality in the world, but it does let us know pretty much where everything sits. Ah, Bobby from Kansas. You say, is a tiger's anatomy the same as a lion's? I would say, yes, absolutely. I think it's probably near identical. There'll be slight changes, but at this scale, at this level of detail, it will be almost exactly the same. And this, of course, the very fine uh, Connor, named for our engineer, currently in Kenya, and his mouth is probably currently that wide open, because I guarantee you he's shoveling food into it as we speak. Isn't he quite splendid? I think he's marvellous. Anyway, if you'd like to know anything about him, uh, you can ask me some questions on hashtag Safari Live. For the meantime, let's send you back over to Jamie, who seems to not have had any further luck with the leopards.